Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and today we are here at my home in Zudesia Zoo, having returned from our dolphin breeding adventure attempts over at Nirne's beautiful, beautiful rescue and rehabilitation center for her dolphins. And I've got some very, very good news! I've been working very hard behind the scenes and the Walnut Center is done! The Squirrel Rehabilitation Center, the Walnut Center, is now fully functional and ready for anyone who wants to come by and start Start helping the squirrels recover. So today we are going to go check out the Wellnut Center. We are going to look at a beautiful epic tree that has been planted. And we're also going to pop over to the Safari Zone so that I can show you guys some delicious donut flavors that you guys actually came up with, as well as start surveying the area so we can come up with what we need for the Giraffe Safari Zone, which is going to be amazing. So we've already got a like path, <laughs> which we spent forever building. That was so cool. We built the path to the Safari Zone and this is the spot where we're going to have our giraffes kind of in their enclosed area. And actually, we definitely need to poke at this giant chasm that's kind of right in the middle of where I wanted to let our giraffes free roam. So we're going to go and we are going to investigate this area and start thinking about how we're going to surround it, how we're going to make it an enclosure for our giraffes to start wandering about. But we also need to go look at the Wellnut Center. We need to go look at a beautiful epic tree that one of you amazing community members have actually planted. And I'm going to show off some other awesome new things to you guys including my new to-do list, my new amazing to-do list. So this is actually a to-do list for just while we are walking and talking eggshell. And while we may come up with any ideas just while we're going about and doing our usual day, because I have so many amazing ideas that we think up on the fly while we're walking around the zoo, and then I forget them because I get so excited to like be able to share the day with you guys and then I don't have time to finish them. So this is our brand new to-do list that I actually made just a little bit ago and it only holds ideas so far that I've come up with for today. So I'm going to jump back and they're called Eureka Moments. And when I come up with a idea while we are just moving and grooving and doing our thing with so much to do in the zoo, I'm going to start writing those ideas down. I'm actually going to start writing them down and don't be afraid to mention them in comments because I've got a whole new way of organizing what we're trying to do in Zudestia Zoo. So that's going to be really fun because now maybe all of those fun little random ideas, like actually the herb thing was just a random idea that I thought up uh, while we were doing some gardening. And then look at what Pavo did. He made Made it into an amazing mod where now we can have actual herbs that we can add to any food any food in the entire world which is pretty amazing but that was one of those ideas that I just mentioned while we were going about doing things in the zoo and then I totally forgot. So this is our new to-do list and what I'll do is during the day I'll write these down like as we are going about and exploring the zoo and then later I'll write them down in the big to-do list so we can try to organize them and actually get some things done including exhibit building because that's going to be so exciting and I'm just so excited because oh man when you guys see it when you guys when you guys see what oh my gosh well you guys right now get a beautiful view of eggshell's butt but it's a very attractive chicken butt so that is okay but yeah when you guys see the walnut center you're gonna get why i'm so excited about all of these little ideas because it is the details the details my friends that bring the zoo to life all right so let's see what we've got here Hem hem. Today's Eureka moments include a maple tree spirit gardening competition, which we have talked about repeatedly before and I continue to forget. So now it is written down so that we can plan on that with all of the zoo crafters in the future. Because I think that people are really, really, really going to love actually like lining their maple tree spirits up. See, there go our Aukies. And then we can bone meal like an entire gardening area and we can see whose maple tree spirit harvests the most first. And I think that would be really, really fun to do. Just kind of like release the maple tree spirits and see what kind of gardening competition they could pull off and then I also I will go down the list as we work our way downstairs don't worry I also have put away the butterflies that we collected from Nirne's beautiful beach paradise and I'm really happy with them we've already gotten so many butterflies which means we are going to be working on the butterfly house pretty soon which is gonna be amazing little chips and we are going to be working on getting their chocolate chip making factory up and going those are not really like Eureka moments because there are already things I know are on our to-do list the Eureka moments are more for spontaneous ideas that I think sound really awesome. Hello, darling! Like, kind hug. I really need to sort out my boyfriend so I know which one I'm allowed to kiss again. And then, let's see. Oh yeah, and then I was down here. And I was actually looking up at our beautiful cookie tree. And you guys, I have to say, 
Out of everything we've done, I think that that cookie tree right there is probably one of my favorite trees we have up in the Garden of Eden. And I can't believe that 152 episodes is going to be the time to plant the next tree. So I wonder what sort of adventures we're going to get up to that's going to justify being a tree in the Garden of Eden where we have our little tree of memory garden. Hmm, memory of trees? No, it's really like the trees of memory, actually. Yeah, that's really what they are because they're trees that represent the memories that we've made. So I'm really excited to see what couple of trees are going to be added in there before we wrap up at 1000 episodes and have to build a new Garden of Eden for all those amazing memories. So yeah, I'm really in love with that cookie tree. And then it hit me. What if we could figure out how to genetically splice a cookie tree? So we could actually have a tree like this YouTube fruit tree, perhaps that actually would give us cookies. I think that would be amazing. So that is also on my list of things to do. And then earlier I was actually with you guys and then everything kind of went kaboom. There was a bit of a hiccup. So you guys uh, don't, you're not gonna be able to see it, but you were with me. I actually did record about 40 minutes and then lost all of it. So it was so sad. It was so sad when little things go hiccup like that. But earlier, the Akis were stuck inside of this waterfall. And I was wondering if the reason they were stuck inside of this waterfall is because they needed a little bit of water. So you can see our front yard looks a little bit different. We now have three bird baths. And I'm hoping that in the future, little birds will start showing up in our yard because that would be so cute if we have little birds that might start using the bird baths. But we've got three of them set into the yard now. And I tried to put down some flowers kind of around them and it just sort of looks a little bit messy. So we might start doing a little bit of landscaping, maybe even in a side quest of our yard to try to make it look a little nicer. But then while I was down here, I caught one of the Aukies stuffing this poor chest absolutely overflowingly full of random crops again. And she did it again. So we'll go ahead and move these. Ah, oh, because this is supposed to be my seed shed. And in the seed shed, we are going to start collecting up a whole bunch of seeds. They'll be like our seed bank. Like you guys have probably heard of seed banks. And those are very important places in the world where people will actually gather up seeds from around the country uh, and around all of the countries. Heirloom seeds, seeds that are used regularly in crops. And they will store them in a seed vault or a seed bank so that if there's some sort of like horrible pestilence that goes through an entire crop and wipes out one of our staple crops, then hopefully we'll will be able to recover as a whole species because of some of the heirloom seeds or some of the heritage seeds that they are storing in these seed vaults. So there's a lot of other reasons to keep a seed vault, but that's one of the biggest ones is to try to stave off famine. Like you guys may be familiar with the potato famine and the fact that it was a disease, a blight that went through the potatoes and it ended up, a lot of people starved to death. That's why it's called the potato famine. A lot of people died, even though that was pretty recently in history. So that's what seed vaults are for. And we're kind of starting a little tiny bit of a seed vault. It's our seed shed. And in the future, what I want to do, and this is also on the Eureka Moments to-do list of the day, is start gathering up different seeds and then like renaming them to mystery seed, mixing them in little mystery seed mix bags and then selling them to our friends because I think that would be really fun. So our friends could just buy like a spring seed pack, a summer seed pack, an autumn seed pack, maybe like a flower seed pack. They don't know what they're going to get and then they can plant it in their garden and be surprised. So I thought that would be really fun. So that's what we're gathering. And you know what? I just realized all of the things that Aki put in here, what if we actually went ahead and just turned them into seeds. Like everything that can be a seed, let's go ahead and just turn them into seeds and then we'll put them in here, in here and just call them like part of the seed vault and we'll sort through all of the different things in the future. But that's brilliant. Aki, I get what you were doing now. She was contributing to the seed vault, not randomly stuffing piles of produce and chests that they don't belong in. Well, actually that's, that's pretty brilliant of her. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we can make a whole bunch of seeds like so. Um, you can't make wheat into seeds, which is kind of an interesting thing. And then let's see, the potatoes you can actually make into potato seeds. So I'm going to go ahead and plant those. Yutsu, you can't make into seeds. Spinach, you can make into seeds. So yeah, never mind. So whatever whatever things the Aki's managed to throw in here that can be turned into seeds, then we'll just go ahead and we will rename them. Or not rename them, we'll turn them into seeds if they're produce and add them into the pile. So that's pretty awesome. And how fun would it be to just have like a like delight mystery seed package and we could just grab a whole bunch of these random seeds and if you recognize the seeds then power to you and you'll be able to be like ah that's a saffron bulb I know what I'm going to get from this package but it's gonna be so much fun because there really is something called a package do 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 
Yeah, there really is something called a package right here from the Mr. Crayfish mod that we can stuff things into and then people can open it up. Like, oh, it's a one-time open little thing. So that would be really, really fun. Uh, and don't worry, we will be getting to the Wellnet Center. Oh my gosh, so much work has been done in the Wellnet Center. I think you guys are going to love it. I'm just trying to, like, catch up on all of the cool ideas that we came up with. And then I lost when, when everything went kaboom. Oh no, we have one of the little Aki's in the wrong spot. Aki! What are you doing? Oh, the spot where the ice is again. You guys get so confused. What was that? Okay. All right. There's a snake trying to eat puppy. All right. That's fine. Okay. Let's just casually, excuse me. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, puppy of the duck. Um, I think you are nearly eaten by an extremely large python. I can only assume that the python came from this jungly area. So, oh my gosh. I guess we have a jungle python now. Um, I guess that's going to happen. It's a uh, bird eating jungle python. So I guess that can go down on the list too. So bird eating jungle python. And maybe we can talk about snakes uh, that eat birds. Which actually, uh, there's a lot of different species of snake that eat birds. And the little check mark is just to show when it's a different thought process. But there's a lot of different snake that, snakes that eat birds. And when I grew up in Missouri, the snake that we really remember as being a bird eating snake is the black rat snake, which is totally harmless. It's not venomous. It's absolutely adorable in my opinion. And they get really, really big. I think they are actually one of the longest snakes of North America, if I remember correctly. Iris, there you go. I'm going to let you start walking around. All right, come on, everybody. You guys need to watch over puppy okay the uh, poor puppy the duck almost got nommed on and hopefully we'll have a side quest soon for the, the uh, doggy daycare by the way that is so much fun if you guys haven't voted on where the two dogs that we currently have over there Devin and pine should go on their special walk then you definitely need to go and do that because it's going to be awesome we're going to find all sorts of random items i don't even know what we're going to find i'm just going to go back and like discover them it's going to be so cool and we'll start doing maybe some more side quests with the dogs so that they can go on more special events and quests and things like that. But yeah, bird eating snakes. Uh, where I grew up in Missouri, that would have been considered the black rat snake. They get very long. I think they're one of the longest snakes of North America. Uh, you can find them in Canada. You can find them in uh, America, like the United States. And we would look up and uh, <laughs> my poor mom had the worst luck with this. She's terrified of snakes, but she would look up in a tree and there would just be like an eight foot black black bird eating snake just hanging just basking on on the branch just hanging off a branch going yeah i'm just being a snake and my mom would scream and scare us all to pieces and ollie is taking an adorable bath but yeah you'll find those guys in trees quite often and they're up there so that they can try to eat birds they can try to eat eggs they can try to eat nestlings so that's a bird eating snake i know of i'm gonna have to look up what kind of snakes eat birds in um asia but it, most snakes i think are pretty opportunistic feeders if it doesn't look like they're going to get hurt by trying to chase down their prey item and i say chase down but most snakes just kind of lie in wait and then their prey item comes to them and they strike because they're stealth hunters but yeah most snakes if they're not gonna really like get hurt or anything from their prey item then they usually try to eat it so we'll have to look into that. I think some snakes even have a special ability to smell out like where eggs are hiding. So any, even if it might not be a bird eating snake, if it's a snake that eats eggs, it probably deals with birds pretty often. All right, let's go ahead and put the peppercorn and the artichokes and all of this random stuff in here. Doo -doo -doo. And then we've got some vanilla beans. And then what was the next thing that I came up with? Oh yeah, the food stands at other people's homes and zoos and their other places. Uh, so that's gonna be really fun when we start building like the food stands and oh my goodness I can't wait to show you guys the uh, the little walnut center so let's go upstairs and sleep so we can go down and visit the walnut center oh and then also I need to put my chinchilla away oh my goodness okay we'll do that in the morning too but yeah we'll go down and we'll visit the walnut center Oh my gosh, and how does food stands at other people's houses make me think of the Walnut Center? For all the detail and the excitement, you guys, and I'm just so excited about all the things we might be able to share with our friends, and just like the idea of setting up little stalls that can sell different things, or even information about things here in the zoo, or what if do like the Dodo like accounting system or something maybe we can start having like dodo accountants spread throughout the world there's so many ideas i just love it all right and then really quickly i need to gather up this experience berry pile whoops 
I'm knocking over my swords. I don't want to... That's the one thing you really don't want to do, is knock over some swords. I might even move some of these swords, because I actually like my treasure room to be a little bit more plant-based rather than combat-based, believe it or not. All right, so let's gather these guys up. And then we'll go down and I will show you guys the Wellnut Center and we'll go look at the Epic Tree. And if we have time, we'll even start touring around where the Safari Zone is going to be because we have a lot to do. A lot of exhibits to build, a lot of things to do, but there's always so much to do in the zoo. No, I'm not trying to eat my berries, I'm trying to pick them. There we go. All right, that should be good for now. There's a couple more back here. I should probably move them if I can't reach them easily because trust me, we're gonna have some projects coming up. There's a little chips. Did I know you were there? I'm pretty sure I knew you were there, sitting on top of my camouflage helmet. You're adorable, little chips. All right, just like the big chips, that's right. But yeah, we are gonna have some projects coming up pretty soon that are going to need a lot of essence berries, so that's a good thing to grab. All right, and then let's see, let's look at our chinchilla really quickly, because our chinchilla is adorable and so cute. And then we're going to go take our chinchilla down to Professor Cowplant and make sure that Professor Cowplant can watch over our chinchilla until we can have a proper home for it. So you guys ready for this? It's so cute! Look at it! Look at it! Oh my gosh, your little ears! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you! Okay, I'll stop jumping all over the place. But this is our chinchilla, you guys! This is another beautiful, amazing creation for the Zoo Crafting Discoveries mod that Pavo is working on. And it's so cute. It's something I asked for ages and ages and ages ago. And it's kind of interesting because I actually don't know that much about chinchillas. They are sort of one of those creatures that fell in between two categories for me. They are considered an exotic creature, but you don't see them in zoos. And you do sometimes see them in pet stores, but not always. So then all of my research on like things that you would normally find in zoos or animals that are very photogenic and you would expect the public to really fall in love with at a zoo didn't include chinchillas. And then when I worked at a pet store for a few years and like learned a ton about animals working there and doing all research on the animals that showed up, it didn't include chinchillas because we'd never sold chinchillas or anything like that. So I don't really know that much about chinchillas. And if you guys have chinchillas, then let me know. I do, I do know that they like dust baths. Um, my friend who lived with us had a chinchilla for like a week but then she like ended up deciding that she didn't have enough time to give him and so she found like a home for him with some people a couple who their whole life was dedicated to their chinchillas all right, all right. and you go little one i don't want you to get hurt so I need to learn about chinchillas. So learning about chinchillas is another thing on the list. In fact, I don't think that's on the list yet. So chin chin care and uh, exhibit. And I think I want to give this chinchilla because we caught it in the wild, a wild type exhibit. So, all right. And let's see. I'm going to grab, should I grab Lily and Tate and just go down past the chocobo? Mm. Whoops. Ah, I'm just throwing my, my vanilla beans on the ground. Hang on one second here. All right, whoops. Oh, that's because I was trying to put them in the wrong side of the oven. No wonder. Oh, and let's actually grab these cups of tea. That would actually be delicious to take with me today. But yeah, let's go downstairs. I'm going to put the chinchilla away. And then we'll grab Lily and Tate. And we'll pop over to the zoo entrance. Because the zoo entrance actually has... Ah, hello. I actually forgot about you, my friend. Hello, my birthday present. Hello, happy birthday. The vampire penguin. Hello, happy birthdays, clone. <laughs> Of all the things that had to clone themselves here in Zudesia, of course it had to be the vampire penguins! Oh my goodness, that's too funny. Alright, well let's keep moving. And do do do. And Professor Cowplant, how are you doing today? Doing good, wonderful, wonderful. Experiment 626. Experiment 626. Experiment 404. Assistant Freezer Bunny. Double checking for any clones. All right, experiment 626. I'm pretty sure there's a new experiment 626, but otherwise we seem to be doing good. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and leave the little chinchilla here. Holy days, do I ever have a lot of reusable safari nets I could probably, probably really actually use elsewhere. Oh goodness. Well, we'll work on trying to empty those things out. Maybe we'll just like pick a random one every week and be like, let's build an exhibit for this thing and just move forward. All right, and then while I'm down here, I'm just going to pick these. I, I, that's the other thing I need to do. Let's see. Ah, da, 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 da. And then I also need to make a uh, gold, uh, gold berry. Is that what they're called? Yeah, gold ore berry trees. 
So the old gold orberry tree orchard that I want to actually like dig down there and put it under our house. So you can have this big beautiful cavern that's going to be filled with these orberries and we will actually make it look like they are trees. So that's going to be very very pretty and very 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 useful to do in the future. If you guys remember in the old world we had that room where we put orberries all over the top and that was so beautiful. So I kind of want to do something similar to that only this time it's going to look like trees. And oh my goodness. Um, um, there's this story that some of you guys may know. I think it's called like the seven princesses or something like that, where these princesses keep disappearing and they keep vanishing every night to go dancing. And the king can't figure out why their dancing shoes are worn out, why the princesses are worn out, what's going on. And then like one of the princesses or maybe like one of the suitors of the princess, like follows them into this magical cavern they disappear into every night. And there's just like trees of silver and trees of gold growing everywhere. And he brings back leaves of those trees and that's kind of the story I want to base uh, the beautiful cavern we're going to make off of. So if you guys know that story or what it's properly called or like what it's part of then please share that with me because it's one of my favorite stories when I was growing up and I would love to figure out where the heck it came from. All right well let's go grab Lily and Tate. Let's see, we put the chinchilla away. I showed you guys the butterflies. Oh yeah, and then the other two ideas I had on here. Sims Freezer Bunny Devincing Toys in honor of our wonderful assistant Freezer Bunny, who is a wonderful, wonderful uh, cow that we've had for a long time doing cloning research. And then also, I think it was Luca a long time ago showed me on Twitter a cow plant statue made out of devincing that I fell in love with. And I want to try rebuilding that uh, as well so that we can have maybe cow plant statues and maybe we could have a greenhouse you guys like our little stalls could sell these statue pieces to make custom plants for this world and i think that would be amazing or even learning how to make the cow plant like an actual plant that would be really really cool if i could actually make like a cow plant plant and then you could maybe get milk or even like life elixir from it that would be really fun ah oh, i love this this to do list is going to be so useful already we're filling it up and it's only like not even we haven't even gotten to the squirrel research center all right so we're actually going to go ahead and go down there now all right, come on, Lily Tate. I know, who's my good puppies? All right, come on, guys. So, oh my goodness, you guys, I think you're going to love what we've done with the Squirrel Rehab Center. I just want to come in and say hello to our giraffes really quickly because they are so beautiful. Hello, you guys. Just wait, just wait. We might have some time to go to the Safari Zone today and be able to see if we can add had something over there, maybe start removing some of the animals that shouldn't be over there. I know there's a lot of turkeys that we can probably collect from that area and then put them into our turkey exhibit, which we're actually going to be looking at in just a moment here. All right, then let's come over here. I'm going to throw these grapes in here. And Lily and Tate, why don't we just go down by the waterfall? So let's go down the waterfall way and we are going to work our way down because I actually kind of like this waterfall part. And we're gonna work our way down and we are going to see how the Wellnut Center looks now that it's completed! <laughs> Every time! Why do I think this is a good idea? Every time! And then I forget there's like this one chunk right there. Look, Lily got caught on it where it's just a bunch of rocks, but it is, it is actually kind of fun. <gasps> and there's another wild hedgehog! Oh my gosh, that's so cute. That is so cute. You are adorable, little wild hedgehog. Do you have any idea how adorable you are? Oh my goodness. All right, well, let's keep moving. And we're going to work our way over to the entrance where I have added a few new things to the entrance to show you guys, including Bluebell and Primrose uh, who are on strike because they're out of sugar. Bluebell, Primrose, would you at least get like, ah, uh, she's not even on strike yet. Come on, Primrose. They're not out of like, uh, I'm just going to keep them. I'm going to take them back upstairs. I'm not going to mi mix them up with the giant python that we collected, I hope. And I will take the girls somewhere safe. I was going to put them over to the birds so they can hang out with the peacocks. But then they went on strike mode and they came over here. I need to get a more reliable source of sugar. I admit this. All right. But yeah, the first new thing that I have added down here since you guys have been here is a Dodo ATM. Huzzah! So it's another Dodo ATM so that people who work over at the Squirrel Rehabilitation Center, aka the Wellnut Center, can then come over with their Zookeeper experience points, come up to the Dodo ATM and exchange, and be able to exchange those experience points for coins or be able to exchange the coins for whatever, whatever denominations they might need in order to buy stuff here in the zoo. So I'm really happy about that and it's an adorable dodo as usual and I try to make each of the dodo ATMs themed to the area that they're in. 
All right, let's see. Maybe some tea will do. So in this case, it is the oak wood. Oh my gosh, there's another hedgehog. There's another adorable hedgehog. Oh, and that's the another thing you guys are going to start noticing is there's going to be a lot more ambient animals. I didn't know hedgehogs climbed trees. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. There's going to be a lot more ambient animals showing up here in Zudestia Zoo. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Ah, oh, let's just enjoy the sunset for a moment. But yeah, there's going to be more birds. There's going to be more like fish. There's going to be more hedgehogs. There's going to be more of the animals that you would just expect to find in a healthy forest biome wandering around the zoo. And that's going to make it really, really fun, including the squirrels. So let's go over and we'll check in on the squirrels now. Bye, little hedgehog. Take care, little tree climbing hedgehog. You're adorable. All right. But yeah, for each of the Dodo ATMs, I try to theme it for each area out of materials that you could expect to find in each zone. So this one is made out of oak wood, oak leaves, and then the silt stone. And you'll see where we use the silt stone in just a moment. All right, Tate Lily, you guys doing good? Sniffing that hedgehog? Do be careful. I don't want you to end up with porcupine quills in your nose. Um, do we have porcupines? I wonder if the hedgehogs could be porcupines. They probably could. Like as in the model, not as in hedgehogs are porcupines because they're not. Don't get that confused, you guys. Don't get that confused. Just that was an idea. All right. And then I also tried to redo the marigold garden that was planted by Tyler a little bit. I'm still figuring out how much I like it. Um, but we're using the garden soil from the gardens uh, mod. It's just I think it's just called like the gardens mod or like the garden pot mod or something like that. And we've had it for a very long time. And you can actually put down multiple plants per plot when you use the garden soil, including a ground cover plant. So we have some clovers as the ground cover. And then we have lots and lots of beautiful marigolds mixed in with some dandelions i just really like that effect because that's what i was telling you guys about how we're going to start having all of these little gardens that just kind of show up in each zone in each area and i really like this one so i'm still playing with it but i still want to say thank you to tyler for sending those beautiful marigold seeds i still haven't planted them but you guys can probably check the vlog channel for when i do finally plant them and then we're back down to specialist cassidy and the walnut center and are you guys ready for this are you ready for this okay dun 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 Ta -da! It's a giant acorn! What do you guys think? <laughs> It doesn't look the best. I'm actually blushing now that I'm showing it to you guys. Look, it's another hedgehog. That's what I mean. More ambient animals showing up everywhere. Oh my goodness. Oh, and Specialist Cassidy is talking. Hmm, looks like I need a few more nuts for the squirrel feed today. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. But it is a giant acorn, just like I wanted. And I ended up building it off camera because there was a lot of trial and error and frustration and attempts with different materials to create the beautiful nut hut that you see before you. So here is the Walnut Center Nut Hut, my friends. And this is where you can come up to the Walnut Center office to find the squirrel adoption information. And I just have to say, this is adorable. <gasps> For our scavenger hunt, we should have some of the animals that you can just sort of stumble upon in the zoo. Oh my goodness. So like zoo, zoo, scavenger, uh, scavenger hunt. Um, let's see. And then I need to come down here. Count the ambient animals example hedgehog and swans uh, mole etc that would be so fun to have our little scavenger hunt so people can go around the zoo they'd have to find mr mole and then if you turn in like a completed scavenger hunt then you'll be able to get a really cool prize i have no idea what the prize is going to be yet but that would be so much fun because then you would have to like look carefully as you wander around and be like there's a hedgehog and then you can tick it off on your little scavenger hunt that would be adorable i love that idea but yes, here is the Nut Hut, the Squirrel Rehabilitation Center office. And this is where you can come up and you can speak with Specialist Alyssa and you can actually buy some supplies from the Nut Hut. And then if you are interested in helping our rescue squirrels, perhaps in adopting one of them, check inside for more info. And then you guys, you can go in and I will show you all of the awesomeness of how you can go up to each of the individual squirrels and actually help them heal and perhaps even adopt them for your area in just a moment. So that's going to be really fun because I'm going to reveal this to the other zoo crafters and then hopefully if they want to adopt a squirrel of some kind. Hedgehog! Oh, you're so cute. This is so much fun stumbling on hedgehogs. Then if they wish to adopt a squirrel of some kind, they can come over here. They can see on the little uh, checklist that you see there what that squirrel needs to be healed. And then they can gather up those items, turn them in and adopt that squirrel for whatever purposes, hopefully good ones, <laughs> hopefully only good ones that they would want to have that squirrel for. So before we go and we look at all that information if you come and speak with specialist Alyssa who is actually a former lion keeper from the old world brought back in a new career 
career, so hopefully she enjoys her career, then you can come over and all of the funds that go towards purchasing anything from the Nut Hut will actually help to fund the Squirrel Rehabilitation Center. So that's why there's things that use coins, but then there's also things that use the Zookeeper Experience Points so that you can get rewards for actually doing some of the Zookeeper stuff, like with our other specialist right over here, Cassidy. You can come down and you can help Specialist Cassidy, who puts together all of the meal pieces for the squirrels and kind of some of their medicines. If you come and you... Chocobo? Hello? Hello? I know, Tate, Tate! Just because there's water doesn't mean you always have to jump in it, Tate! Oh, he's adorable. Alright, apparently we have a very excited Chocobo somewhere nearby, so hello, Chocobo? Okay, well, maybe the Chocobo wants to eat some of these delicious pecans, too. But yeah, you can come over and you can leave supplies for the squirrels over at this crate. And you can put in like the maple syrup, you can put in the leaves, the wood, the honey, the beeswax, all the different stuff that we've looked at before. And you can get the zookeeper experience points because that's kind of like doing a job. So you don't have to worry about coins. It's part of doing the zookeeper jobs, which is really, really fun. How are you doing today, Specialist Cassidy? Did you know squirrels are actually vital to helping maintain the health of forest? The nuts and seeds gray squirrels bury often turn into trees. Yes, I did, Specialist Cassidy. That is so cool, though. Oh, my goodness. And I'm so excited looking behind her, actually, at this little spot. Because this is going to be a wetlands area in the future. Why does it have a horse and so many hedgehogs? They're adorable. Oh, my goodness. We need to have more ambient animals running around with a little scavenger hunt. That would be so much fun. In fact, then you guys... <gasps> We might even start doing that in the future too. Oh my goodness, you guys. Keep an eye out for that. We might start having scavenger hunts where you could uh, maybe earn planting a tree. If you are the first person to, to like tell the timestamps for the, the scavenger hunt items of the day. So that might be a thing that we definitely will be doing in the future because that sounds like an adorable idea. But yes, you gather up these zookeeper experience points from Specialist Cassidy and then you come over to Specialist Alyssa. And you can use those Zookeeper Experience Points to buy things like pine cones because you actually can't get pine cones um, from the wild. Like, you can if you want to pick them off the pine trees, but guess what? They don't regrow. <laughs> Which I think is so sad because pine cones are everywhere and they're so cool. And did you guys know it often takes two years for a pine cone to become fully mature? That's something I learned in my biology class in university that sort of blew my mind. Because there's pine cones everywhere every year. But each pine cone you're looking at on most species of tree, not all, but like at least the ones we talked about in biology class uh, at the university level, was... Uh, those are two years old like you're looking at a two-year-old fruit that a tree has created well not a fruit you're looking at a two-year-old little thing that a tree has created and it was just amazing anyway you can use zookeeper experience points to buy some pine cones because you might need those pine cones in order to help the squirrels in the rehabilitation center you can also use it to buy a seed bag um because you probably <laughs> might need seeds for different things in the zoo different animals definitely need to eat these seeds and also i imagine that the squirrel rehab center would have a lot of seed bags just laying around that you could probably take <gasps> and how fun would it be if you could take the seed bags and what if we have like a place where you can turn the seed bags in and just get like a random seed back that would be so cool that would actually be really cool okay i need to add more of these things oh so many ideas i love how many ideas we always have so what about viewer scavenger uh, scavenger hunt and let me know what you guys think about that and i've also been thinking about maybe tree uh trivia tree planting so like we might do a special day where there is like a trivia question from an old episode of zoo crafting and the first person to answer it correctly can have a tree planted i think that would be a really fun way to help you guys out who can't like can't donate or do anything like that and it would still create an opportunity for like our long-term viewers or our new viewers if you're doing the scavenger hunt to have trees added in because i really want to bring our world to life it's going to be fantastic oh, that's actually what i'm trying to do with some of the spare time well i say spare time it's not really spare time and let me feed the dogs just a second and i'm babbling i'm sorry i'm just so excited but that's actually what i'm trying to do with some of the resting time that's how the squirrel rehab center got built today was i had the time to rest and get my health up a little bit and then i built this and it's so fun to share it with you guys okay and then i also need to put like seed bag random seed dispersal 
question mark, question mark, question mark. So many ideas. Some of these may not survive because <laughs> they're not good enough, but we'll just have to see. But yeah, you can go ahead and get those from her. And then if you get a lot of Zookeeper experience points, two whole stacks worth, then you can come over and you can get a Walnut Squirrel plushie because you will have proven yourself to be an extremely helpful zoo crafting community member. And then you'll be able to get this plushie to show that off. So that's just kind of a really fun thing. You could craft a squirrel plushie, sure. But then you could, you know, come by. You could earn tons and tons and tons and tons of Zookeeper experience points. You could get a Walnut Squirrel plushie and you can put it in your house somewhere in the zoo crafting world if you are you know one of our amazing people and then you will be able to look at that squirrel plushie and know that you did some awful great deeds to help out some squirrels every time you see it so i think that would be really fun but yeah you can also buy a lot of things from our wonderful specialist Alyssa uh to support the the nut hut and those things are like oak saplings pine saplings the pine saplings are what drop the pine cones and i really think they're so beautiful they're just a little hard to find i think Inasia is the only person who lives in an area that off the top of my head I know of as being a place where these pine saplings show up. There's also pecan saplings, walnut saplings, nutmeg saplings, and chestnut saplings. So you can basically get all of the nut trees and the oak trees that you would expect to find squirrels in from the walnut center. And then comes the food, the really excitingly named food. Oh my goodness. And that's the chunky peanut smoothie, the sunflower seed pretzel, the nibble of nuts muffin, the squirrely seed soup, the triple nut bread and the walnut pecan pie so if you're in the mood for something a little bit nutty and you would like to support the nut hut then you can come over and buy some of those items and i think that's so fun and then we've got our beautiful little benches look at how filled like up this area is starting to look you guys oh and Alyssa, what am i gonna do with all these pine cones hmm well, don't you worry, Alyssa, because some of our squirrels actually need pine cones. And let me come on in. So say we are interested in rescuing some of these squirrels that we have over here in the Walnut Center. Then we can come by and you walk inside the adorable acorn. And you can see there's a few things set up here. Squirrel rescue instructions. There's a bookshelf right here and there's a chest. So if you happen to have any injured squirrels in a safari net, you can leave them right in here. Uh, there's a few crates of supplies. There's an adorable plant because everybody needs some plants to spruce up their life. And then there are these five chests and each of these chests represent one of the different areas because there's five different spots where squirrels can be put into oh look and you can see one of the squirrels running around all right just need to sort these walnuts and pecans for the squirrels that's wonderful Alyssa. i'll try to help you in just a little bit but there's five different areas the squirrels can be in and each of those areas is represented by one of these chests and if you open up the chest you'll find a piece of wool and if it's empty, then you won't find a book. Uh, and by empty, I mean like we do have one empty walnut center over there. The very first room is empty and each room is called a grove because that sounds a lot cuter than like cage or room. So they're each grove uh, is, is numbered. And so grove number two actually does have a squirrel. So you can come and pick up the patient data so you can learn about that squirrel. Walnut patient data, grove number two. A young red squirrel who was separated from its mother too early. Doing well, but needs more food and to be taught how to forage for itself. Gather the amount of food listed on the chart by the patient's grove and place the food in the proper chest. Once all the food is collected, the squirrel can recover and may be taken home or released by the adoptee. So that is how that is going to work. You can come and read the patient information and then you can go and read the chart and see the things that the squirrels need on the chart. And then you can bring those items put them into the chest and then once you are all done you can adopt that squirrel and it should be a lot of fun and I need squirrel names by the way because we're going to make sure that each one of those squirrels has a name before people can come and adopt them because that would be really fun but how would they come and adopt them that was kind of a brief overview but for all of our amazing zoo crafters you guys can encourage them to come adopt squirrels if you think that would be a really fun thing to do there is this instruction manual and it's a little bit long so I'll just give you the basic gist of it I tried to explain it pretty well for all of my friends so that if they pop on and I'm not around to give them a little bit of squirrely adoptee advice then everything will be nice and clear for them and for any visitors we might have to the server in the future because this is this is one of those long range things that I would love to see people adopt lots of squirrels over a period of time and I hope other people set stuff up like this I know Mara is planning on doing stuff with dogs so I would love to do something along these lines with dogs too because it's just so fun and interactive
All right, so in our groves, we house squirrels who are currently part of our recovery program. Usually they have been injured in some way or abandoned and need a little extra help to get back on their adorable paws. All guests are welcome to admire our squirrels and help the center through purchasing our goods. But perhaps you'd like to go a bit further and help the squirrels themselves. And so, yep, then basically if you want to do that, do 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 you just need to look at the patient data and you need to see what the squirrel needs on its clipboard in front of their grove. And then if you want to be, if you want to start, like say if you want to start taking care of the squirrel in grove number two, then what you do is you take this wool and it's white wool right now to show that nobody is trying to adopt or help or heal the squirrel. You take the white wool out and you swap it for the green wool right here. So you'd be like, okay, I want to help out this squirrel. All right, there we go. And then you would put the green wool down. And then that's basically like claiming that squirrel and letting people know that you're working on this as a project. And then you can come up and you put the white wool up there. So then people basically will know either from glancing there or glancing inside and seeing the green wool. Oh, somebody is working on taking care of this squirrel. So I need to find a different squirrel to try to adopt so that's how that works so that people will be alerted um good my dogs didn't steal the wool i was worried they did that for a second so people will be alerted to who may be like kind of working away at trying to gather up the items to heal a squirrel and which squirrels are available for adoption and then once you do that let's see yep the wool and then yeah check the clipboard gather the items place them in the chest and then once you have gathered all the all of the items the squirrel is healed and you may take the single use safari net in the shelves above the chest and go pick the squirrel up to take with you what do you do with a squirrel well that is up to you but if you worked hard to help it heal we trust you if you need some of the ideas if you need some ideas then check the additional book on this bookshelf if you have questions then don't be shy then don't be shy ask zookeeper siri and she'll be happy to help you so that is the instruction manual for my amazing friends oh dear there's some amazing rain coming down now and then this is actually like the now what is a book a guidebook and i won't read through this uh like word by word but it's basically some ideas for our fellow zoo crafters so if they're going to go what the heck am i going to do with a squirrel now siri then they know like here's some ideas that hopefully will spur them on to doing something like creating an exhibit for the squirrel so it can actually serve as a mob or adding the squirrel to a safe squirrel safe exhibit that they already have maybe an aviary or maybe if they have some horses they can add the squirrel in there so that you can just have more ambient animals running around because that's really fun and then they could also create a free-ranging squirrel that's something we can do thanks to the wonderful npc mod and that would allow the squirrel to kind of roam free and dash around the place within a range that you can set on the npcs so that'd be really fun i may or may not have suggested putting a squirrel in pablo's chicken coop <laughs> so I have no idea what that's doing down there. And then you can also like have the squirrel just when it's a big wandering, you can set the, the spaces to be like really, really large for the range on wandering for NPCs in the NPC mod. If you do that, then you can just be charmed by suddenly stumbling upon it. And no, the hedgehogs are not NPCs. They're just adorable random hedgehog mobs that tend to wander around all over the place. And they're so cute. And then you can also make a squirrel an item giver. And it, I thought it would be really fun if once we have some squirrels held up who might be npcs who are all some item givers if they give you uh something like either branches pine cones nuts mushrooms or other items they drop what if they could give you a sapling and then every time a squirrel gives you like a sapling of a tree of some kind you have to plant it right away just wherever it like landed so it can represent how squirrels help to build up forest over time so i thought that would be kind of fun and then also, yeah, you can just use the squirrel as an NPC or as a mob animal to uh, like populate a park or populate a national forest. And that's something that we're going to start working on in the future too, is breeding up animals and creating a national forest that we can really actually start filling up with all sorts of beautiful animals and making it super vibrant. And it's going to be so much fun. So whew, oh, that was a lot of talking, but it's, it's a little bit of a system and I wanted to explain it in case you guys ever want to try out something like that in whatever world you work on. So let's go see what the squirrels actually need to start healing up. Well, let's pop over to this baby squirrel. Hey, little one. Oh my gosh, he's dancing on top of the mushroom. You're so cute. You are just so cute. I love you. All right. But this is squirrel and you can see you can flip uh, like I love this clipboard. This is from the Bibliocraft mod just in case you guys are wondering. It will point to which one of the two rooms it's currently referring to. So squirrel status, walnut recovery, grove number one. That's this grove right here. It is empty. 
But if you flip it to the next page, squirrel status with the arrow pointing this way, this is grove number two, squirrel caramel. And caramel is that baby squirrel that you read about in the data book that we had for the grove two chest. And to take care of caramel, then you need to feed it 32 walnuts, feed it 32 eggs, feed it 16 mushrooms, any non-poison type, mind you. You also need to feed it 16 pine cones and four maple syrup. And that is it for caramel. But then as you go down the list, you can kind of check things off as you start finding the items and feeding it to caramel. Of course, this is after you put the green wool in so everybody knows that you've kind of claimed caramel and you're trying to heal caramel up. And then once you complete everything, you can grab that safari nut and you can come over and you can adopt caramel, which would be so fun. Ah, so that is the interactive squirrel rehabilitation center that any of our guests and any of our zoo crafters can come work on. And I hope you guys will encourage some of the other zoo crafters to come and try it out if you think that they would enjoy it because I think it's really awesome. And hi, little one. I need one, two, three three names for these squirrels. This one is an older squirrel who broke some bones and so probably won't be released back into the wild. Would work best as an ambassador animal who could stay like in a facility of some kind or in a zoo perhaps, an exhibit of some kind. And it actually needs 32 pieces of oak wood, 16 wool pieces, and try to use your imagination for why you might need some of these. The oak wood is actually to kind of serve as splints. The wool pieces is to serve as like a cloth that you can use to bind the broken bones. 24 oak saplings to be kind of springy so the squirrel can jump up and down on it and start building up its muscles again. Uh, 32 eggs and those eggs are, squirrels do eat eggs and those eggs are for the calcium and for all of the health that you can get from an egg. It has a lot of protein as well which is very important for healing bones. And then 16 oranges or 64 yutsu fruit to keep the vitamin C up and going and apparently squirrels actually enjoy oranges and I did a little bit of searching and I couldn't really find anything that went down really hard like against feeding squirrels oranges so I guess they can eat them I don't know if I can advocate for you like just cutting an orange and leaving it for like the squirrels in your backyard yet Tate because I'm not sure if that's healthy for them but apparently they can so it is on the list here as something that you can feed to your squirrels uh, or this squirrel so that it can become healed and be ready to leave the grove and find a new home somewhere else so it's pretty adorable and then also three old bird nests and one pumpkin for enrichment items to entertain our poor little old squirrel so that's a really fun one i'm actually thinking we might try to adopt this squirrel because i've got a bit of a soft spot for it there was another hedgehog that was so cute i've got another soft spot for it um because it is one of our very first squirrels we ever did add into this world so and we found this one actually behind uh the relic ruins like at the desert in relic ruins so hmm, I wonder what that story is. And then these two squirrels, their little backstory is that they were burned in a forest fire and they're recovering pretty well. But they're very, they're kind of very wild and they just need a little bit of healing so that they can get over the forest fire they were in. And then they're probably going to be ready to either go back into a park or the forest or the wild or an exhibit that's a little bit more hands off. So again, the arrows will point you to which squirrel exhibit you're looking at. And then it'll also tell you grove number four and grove number five. And they're the exact same things right now on their healing items. Let's see if I can show that off. Yeah, look at that. Man, I love these clipboards. And they're the exact same things. Eight aloe vera, 24 wool pieces, 23 or 32, excuse me, tea leaves, 16 honey, four coconuts, and 23 or... <laughs> 32 pecans. Ah, oh, number dyslexia sucks. You always flip numbers around. So 32 pecans. So if you gather up all of those items, then you can go ahead and adopt these squirrels. And it's not like you know, it's not like both uh or it's not like eight aloe vera count for both squirrels. That's just eight aloe vera per squirrel. So, you know, if you happen to be just gathering up lots of these items, then you could potentially adopt both squirrels at once. So that would be really cool. Ah, so there we go, you guys. We might, if you guys think it's cool, we might start working on this and then I I hope that everybody else will enjoy a little bit of this interactive exhibitness where they can come and they can do things to like heal up the squirrels and get the squirrels in their areas and just have something fun to really participate in and something fun to really help contribute to the well-being of the little adorable animals that share our world. So I'm really hoping everybody will enjoy that. Ugh. And thank you so much for listening as the very long explanation of how the Wellnut Center works. But man, am I ever proud of it. In fact, I think I'm going to work on building a like Pavo-styled fencing 
Ah, I really do need to make a Pavlov style dancing sign to go over here. And it can be like an oak tree. It should be an oak tree with a bunch of like big acorns hanging from it. And maybe we could even have the walnut the hut, the nut hut, sell dancing acorn decorations. Uh, let me see if I can add that in. Uh, okay. Nut hut, uh, DeVince, and then I'll just know it like DeVince. There we go. DeVince in, uh, acorn decorations. That would be so fun. And then we could have the nut hut sell it. Oh, that would be awesome. All right. Well, that is that. Man, I am so proud of that, though, you guys. That is all just because we were trying to figure out how to take care of that squirrel and how to, like, fill in that one little gap that we were sort of struggling with over there. So let's go ahead and we're going to go over to the Temperate Forest uh, Zookeeper Hut so that we can get out of the rain. And then I am going to show you guys the new beautiful epic tree that has been added into our temperate forest area by Jason. So, I, and that's the other really great thing. There's the chocobo that we heard earlier. Hi, sweetie. Oh, it's a little girl chocobo. But yeah, that's the other great thing. And thank you guys so much for your patience about being able to get a little bit more rest as I'm starting to be able to catch up with all of the amazing people who have supported us so much. And it's just fantastic. And it's making me so happy to actually see the interns and the NPCs and the trees start showing up in our world. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, geez. I thought that was one of my dogs for a second. I really need to turn these teleporters into statues. Maybe I need to put that down on my to-do list too. Teleporters. And then... Uh, turn into statues. There we go. So yay! This is going to help me so much because I forget all of these awesome ideas too often. Alright, so there is a brand new tree. It is one of the beautiful epic trees, which means one of the big trees that has been added into our zoo and I am really happy with where it is and really happy with the centerpiece and you can already see it. The centerpiece that it has become. And it's a big, beautiful redwood, you guys. And it is going to bring this corner of the zoo, which has kind of been a little bit neglected with our turkeys, to life. I am so happy. I raided so much of the tree, like forest over here. We have bushes over here now. We have all sorts of beautiful birds that you're going to start finding, just hiding in the trees. You can already hear them. Apparently, there's a boar. I hope it, it will, like, leave me alone. Please leave me alone, boar. You can see there's all of these beautiful bushes. Okay, no! Well, good job, Tate. I, I, I'm not gonna feel bad about that because it was in self-defense. I warned the boar. I did. <laughs> good job, Tate. <laughs> I'm sorry, here, have a piece of zombie jerky. There you go, guys. All right, and then here's all of our turkeys. And the turkeys, I'm hoping to have some more interactive animals in here too. Like maybe some of the squirrels we could add in with the turkeys. You can also see there's some beautiful finches that are starting to roost in the trees. So a lot more of the ambient animals. There's a lot more sheep starting to roost in the trees. That's fine. All right, then. A lot more of the ambient animals are going to start showing up. And ambient just means like animals you would expect to find in the background. All right. And here we go, you guys. There's another sheep roosting in the leaves at the base of this beautiful, <laughs> of this beautiful redwood tree. But here it is. This gigantic, beautiful, with squirrels and birds and the very, very tippy top included redwood tree. So this glorious, glorious thing is a beautiful epic tree that was planted by Jason, who actually sent in some fantastic snail mail from Australia, too. That was super exciting to get. And I'm super excited to add his tree in, too, because this was just like, I had a eureka moment of like, this is a spot in the zoo that needs some attention. And now it has the attention. Oh, my goodness. Where are we? All right. Yeah, da, 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 da. And now it has the attention because look, now we've expanded. We hadn't really done anything with like this part of the temperate forest. And now we have come over, we have expanded, and we have this beautiful redwood. So this is the pillar of the forest planted by Jason. It is a glorious redwood tree. And around it, we've got dancing sheep in the trees. I, I honestly didn't anticipate that kind of um reaction from the native wildlife of planting the redwood tree. I really, you know, sheep were the last thing on my mind when I was thinking of creatures that might be attracted to this area. But you can hear there's lots and lots of finches in the area now. There's a pigeon. Uh, sheep, sheep, please, please, sheep, please. I don't, sheep, sheep, please. You're, no, Lily, please. Pigeon, you probably should have put your nest somewhere else. <laughs> There's mushrooms, there's a pigeon, there's pigeon eggs in this little nest. You're gonna see like nests all over the place. There's finches over here. There's just lots and lots of happy birds. There's beautiful berry bushes. We're going to actually have an area over here where you can come over. Ooh, and there's an owl. Ah, that's so fun! There's so many birds! There's so many birds who are now attracted to this kind of forest area. Look, you can see more finches over here too. And there goes some butterflies! So many butterflies! Ah! 
Oh my goodness, I only have one empty jar left, don't I? I need to go buy more from Relic Ruins. Oh my goodness, butterflies! If I run across one, I'm definitely gonna try to catch one. But yeah, there's so many birds and butterflies and apparently sheep that have shown up here since I, I implanted this tree. They were not here before, so this is kind of really cool. I mean, some of the birds like started showing up, but still. And then down here is a nice little area where we potentially might be adding in some deer so you can come up and do some deer viewing, like climb up a little path, come over and then just watch as a bunch of wild, probably white-tailed deer sort of graze and spend a little bit of time down here and is that a grave that's fine I didn't know there was a grave down here I probably ran across this grave at one point in the past I just don't remember yes I must have because I already I already picked it up and put it back down because you can't read it anymore so Lily it's rude <laughs> Lily please don't dance on graves Lily <laughs> Lily I don't want to wish bad mojo upon your head please oh my goodness all right so we'll have to move that grave to a proper graveyard um because I want this area to be a nice little area where the deer can just hang out and graze so <gasps> you can't ask for a better butterfly come here Come here! You landed right on my head! That's like Pavo's worst nightmare and my, my like happiest blissful day! Come back little butterfly, where did you go? <gasps> I wasn't ready! That's what I get for not being ready! That's what I get- Lily! Lily, are you watching the butterfly? Lily, there's the butterfly! Lily, okay, is it over here? Lily, this is the grave again! Come on, butterfly! Oh, that is Pablo's worst nightmare too, just having a butterfly suddenly show up on his face. And meanwhile, I'm over here like, yes! Come here, little one! Maybe I should like chew on a strawberry and try to make myself more attractive to the butterflies. And there goes the sheep. I had, to, I don't know. <laughs> tree, tree climbing sheep. The legacy of Bob is beginning to live on once again. <gasps> there it is again. There it is again. Hey, you. Hey, you, come be my friend. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, this is so pretty. Jason, thank you so much. This is gloriously beautiful. Oh, tell me, I can get this butterfly. Did I get it? <gasps> I got it! It's a red admiral butterfly! And I got to catch a butterfly! That was so much fun! Now I'm out of jars for my butterflies, and I really need to start a butterfly house soon because I have no more room for my butterflies on my shelves. But that's awesome! I really don't think that pigeon should have put its nest there. It's, it's ending up with a lot of dogs and sheep dancing upon its eggs. It probably, probably needs to learn to put its nest somewhere else next year. But yeah, so this is a nice, beautiful little corner, and I'm hoping from this we'll be able to have sort of a rest hub where people can come relax listen to the bird song admire the beautiful sheep of all things uh, maybe pick some berries because there's blackberries and uh, there's some of the huckleberries that you can gather from the the bushes over here and then move on to other parts of the zoo including a kind of interesting spot and yeah you can see lots and lots of spots where there's different eggs hiding inside the bushes which is really fun. There's a hedge to block you from an interesting spot I found while we were planting the redwood tree. And we've probably looked at, ooh, what's this? Coriander seeds. We've probably looked at this spot in the past and I just couldn't remember. But this, my friends, is a beautiful, glorious cave system! We're gonna have to spend a day or two exploring this because exploring the caves is so much fun. In fact, I've got some torches that we can just kind of casually put down here. <gasps> Oh, yes, 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 yes. There's berry bushes. That always makes me so happy. So, yeah, there's a pretty cave system. So, we might... Ooh, okay. Oh, that's a horse. All right. Well, buddy, um, do I have an empty safari net on me? Buddy, I have got some bad news. I don't have an empty safari net. Oh, my. All right. We have a horse rescue mission that we're going to have to pull off. That's, that's now on the list. Okay. Well, I need safari nets. So you guys are going to have to wait because I need to either buy or I need to empty some of my safari nuts. And then we'll do like a redwood horse uh, rescue. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Rescue mission. And actually we're going to start collecting up these horses. And we are going to start keeping them at the meadow of horses. Where we're going to have that flower field that we're going to turn into a wild horse area like a wild horse protection area so we'll be able to find homes for these horses don't you guys worry we'll take good care of them oh my goodness i can't wait till the unique breeding systems that i have in mind for the horses in the meadow of horses start showing up too you guys we've got so much more so much more in terms of adventure and excitement it's going to be amazing all right so it looks like this is a little cave system but we might do a little bit of poking and clearing out i mean i say a little cave system but that's just that branch and there's definitely a lot more to it. So hang in there, you guys. We'll rescue you soon. I just can't do it today. Oh, gosh. And it keeps going this way, too. All right. Well, we'll light it up just to make sure nothing tries to climb out and 
eat our, our guest who are trying to look at the redwood trees. And then we'll be back to rescue those horses as soon as we can. I just need to get some empty safari nets. That's kind of a bit of a fooey. So, all right. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful redwood tree. Beautiful animals everywhere. Lots and lots and lots of abundant ideas that I'm actually super excited about. This is going to be fantastic. Oh, my goodness. And as always, you guys can contribute your ideas. You guys are truly what make this world come to life in so many different ways from planting trees to becoming interns to just your ideas and inspiration your excitement and just the fact that you get to learn so much from us it's amazing it's just amazing and i love it ah and i'm really 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 proud of the wellness center so, all right, I think that's everything over here, even though I kind of want to bask under the redwood tree for a bit longer. And then also we have this new land bridge that has, um, when I was planting the tree, this land bridge showed up, possibly because the uh, dirt was displaced. And, and now we can get over to this side of who knows what this is. Like, technically it's part of our zoo, but we've never really, like, actively thought about putting exhibits over here and the more I look at it the more I'm like this spot would be pretty good to clear out and maybe put a little exhibit down there so our temperate forest area has so much room to grow so much room to grow <gasps> maybe we should make a mushroom identify like a mushroom ID hut or something like that like a mushroom path so like a mushroom ID exhibit so that maybe people could go and learn how to collect some edible mushrooms from along a little mushroom trail or a mushroom path. So, ah, oh, so many amazing ideas and another beautiful sunset. But all right, you guys, so it has been another fantastic day in Zudestia Zoo, mostly showing you guys and catching you guys up on the Wellness Center. And I hope that's okay because I'm so proud of the Wellness Center and how it turned out. And it was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. And this and the Wellness Center, that's the kind of work I'm doing behind the scenes. So I just want you guys to know zoo crafting is still growing and going forward just as strong as ever. And I am so proud of it. And I'm so proud of you guys. And these are such noisy deer. Let's get away from them. Oh gosh, I'm walking into benches trying to run away from the noisy deer. And then next time, my friends... Alright, there we go. Away from those noisy, noisy deer. But next time, we are actually going to try going over to the safari area and start clearing room for our giraffes. There's another hedgehog! <gasps> so cute! We're going to start gathering up the animals and clearing room for our giraffes to be able to stretch their very, very long legs and their very long necks and have the safari, uh, like the actual safari area in the savanna zone. I should call it the savanna zone. And then the safari area is where we want to be able to like ride a little track or something and sit back and relax and just be able to look at all of the beautiful animals like the giraffes and maybe some zebras and okapi and so many other things that we're going to have over in the, sa the safari zone so i'm gonna have to figure out the names on those things it's, it's tripping up my tongue right now tate but yes thank you guys so much i cannot wait to share all of these amazing things with you i can't wait to continue expanding with your ideas and i can't wait to continue learning more about the natural world that we all share through the beauty of our zoo crafting world and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye